if obviously they're a tough team. They have a lot of great individual players. Uh, but I, I think you hold that team in the fourth quarter to 18 points and 36% from the field, and that carries over into overtime. Um, I thought Mason Plumley was great, met the challenge of guarding one of the hardest guys to guard in the league in DeMarcus Cousins, and uh, he was great. Trey, obviously the minutes he gave us. Will Barton kind of showed up, scores 11 of our 13 in overtime. Um, and the most important thing is we win the season series. We're down 18. We look like we've been on a long road trip. We have no legs. But our guys never quit, and we were really positive with them at halftime, saying, hey, we're going to get this game, we're going to get this game. And I thought one of the keys, Ali, was we're down 18, we call a timeout at the end of the second quarter, and we close the half on a 6-0 run, take it from 18 down to 12. And uh, that was important. That, that gave us a little bit of uh, uh, kind of motivation for that second half. But an uh, unbelievable win, so proud of our guys. Yeah, going into that second half, what was your message to the guys as you closed it down from the 18 to 12? Yeah, it was real simple. Uh, you know what, fellas, first game back is always the hardest game. Uh, we're still trying to find our legs. Jamal Murray was, I mean, we've been out of the altitude. And so first quarter, six minutes in, Jamal was looking at me like, I can't breathe. I mean, we had guys on our bench taking their sneakers off in timeouts because they were that tired. But uh, the message was simple at halftime, stay with it. We're going to be fine. Just continue. Let's get our defense into the game. Uh, let's make sure we're, uh, you know, keeping them off the three-point line. We did a great job of taking care of the ball for the most part. We had 30 assists tonight. So it was very positive, very encouraging. And at some point, I knew that we would catch our second wind. And I knew that we would get defense into the game at some point. And, uh, you know, to come back from 18 down against that team, coming off of a six-game road trip is a hell of a win for us. So very proud of our guys. And, Coach, good to see Torrey Craig having the game yeah. that he did. I mean, that guy, you guys got to understand what, he, what he's been through in the last 24 hours. He gets a call. He's in middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. He takes an Uber. He gets a 4 o'clock wake-up call on a 515 flight. He gets here for shoot-around. I start him. He plays well. I put him in at the end of regulation, and he blocks Drew Holiday's shot. Welcome to the NBA. That kid is an NBA player. I believe in him, and I think we're going to see more and more great things from Torrey Craig moving forward. When did you know you were going to start him? Um, I said, you know what? They have this 45-day rule. If he's going to be up here, let's play him. I did not want to bring Torrey Craig up and say, okay, just in case of emergency. And uh, I talked with Nicola. I think Nicola was more comfortable coming off the bench tonight, kind of ease him back into it. By the way, he gets a double-double, which is amazing in 22 minutes. And it didn't even seem like he had a double-double, Nicola. But uh, after shoot-around, I said, you know what, let's put Torrey out there. I mean, Torrey's been guarding the G League best players. Let's put him on Drew Holiday. And I thought of all the guys that guarded Drew Holiday tonight, I thought he did an unbelievable job guarding him. He's, he's got great size, physicality, athleticism, and that last player regulation, I think, speaks to the potential he has a defender, as a defender in the NBA. So really proud of Torrey. Tory comes up, let's just put him on Drew Holiday. If you make it sound like it was such an easy decision, was it, did it, is it that easy? Is it For me, it was. Yeah. I mean, you know why? Because I believe in him. Yeah. I said it in Boulder. I say it right now, not just because of the game he had, but because I've seen it. Yeah. You know, I saw it in Summer League. I saw it when we were in Atlanta with our mini camp. I saw it in our gym all through September. Uh, Tory Craig is an NBA player. I've been in the league a long time. And my, my thinking on it was really simple, Chris. Again, 45 days, throw him out there. Let's see if he is what I think he is. And he is. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't unbelievable tonight, but he made enough key plays in this game to have a positive impact in the outcome. And that's not easy for a guy that's traveled all night, got here, and showed up, hey, go ahead, take Drew Holiday. And he embraced it. And I, and I think he'll continue to embrace those types of opportunities. So what was the key to the defense on Anthony Davis? He had a big first half, but then that third quarter in particular, you guys really got to slow him way down. What was the key there? Yeah, you know what? It's funny. Uh, we, we've had this a lot this year. First half, the defense really isn't there. And the second half, our defense turns up. And it's not like we change a lot of things. I think what we change is our aggression. We, what changes is our physicality our hit first mentality and again I thought you know whether it was Wilson on Anthony Davis whether it's Trey Lyles on Anthony Davis and Mason's defense on DeMarcus Cousins I mean when you when you guard DeMarcus you have to get into your mind it is going to be a just a hand-to-hand -hand combat and you're either going to shy away from that or you're going to embrace it and I thought all of our guys embraced that in the second half our fourth quarter defense tonight was amazing I mean, again 18 points 36 percent from the field and uh, we force overtime, and uh, we, pull, we pull out of a, a great win. So, uh, so proud of our guys. As we all know, they're tired. But to win the season series against the team moving forward is going to be really important. And we continue to win on a home court. 
which I think is really important as well. That fourth quarter defense really seemed to stem from Mason Plumlee. What did he do differently to really be able to stymie these guys down low? You know, I, I think it was doing his work early. You know, when you guard a guy like DeMarcus, you can't wait to defend him. You know, DeMarcus got going from the three-point line. I mean, he's such a freaky, freakish, talented guy. But I think it was just meet, meeting him early, doing his work early, meeting his physicality. And I give the referees credit because they allowed those guys to play. You know, it, there, were, there was a lot of physicality going on, uh, but they allowed them to play, and we had active hands, and we gave Mace help when we needed to, and when, uh, we pulled out an unbelievable win. Will's closed a lot of games for you guys over the course of the season already. What's he like in the overtime period in huddles? Does, does he want the ball in those situations? Uh, Will, Will always wants the ball, man. <laughs> you know, Will could be 0 for 10, coach, give me the ball, give me the ball. And uh, that's why, like, I, I was trying to get the ball in his hands to run a play, and they trapped him along the sideline, and he turned the ball over. And then late, you know, he could have made one more pass, and they, and they foul him, and he misses the first free throw. I mean, so it's great to, to want to be in that moment. He's never scared of the moment. He has supreme confidence. Uh, but obviously, we just got to make sure we're not turning the ball over in those situations. But, you know, Will Barton's a gamer. In the first half, you could tell his back was bothering him. You could tell he wasn't him. It was not Will Barton. As that second half uh, kind of, you know, went on, he, he loosened up. He got his swag back. And... And in overtime, he brought it home at 11 to 13 points, which is uh, which is amazing. Uh, Moutier, obviously, uh, he's going home with a uh, an ice machine. Roll it, uh, obviously, keep it iced, elevated, and uh, we'll see how he feels tomorrow. But I don't think there's anything really serious or sinister. Uh, I think it's just a, a bad ankle sprain. Hopefully, we'll have him back for practice on Sunday. Uh, like you said, a really physical game. Do you, do you have any, or does it give you any extra pride to win one of those kind of knockdown, dragout games as a coach? Yeah, I mean, you know, these are the kind of games you have to win. You know, we want to be a playoff team. They want to be a playoff team. There was a lot at stake tonight. Season series against a team that's going to be, you know, nip and tuck the whole way for until mid, middle of April. So the fact that, you know, uh, last year, and we've seen it time and time again, early in the year, we had Paul and Nicola as our closers. Well, right now, we relied on our defense. We relied on Will Barton, Gary Harris, Jamal Murray, Mason, and Trey Lyles. So that's what I love about our team. We're a very resilient group. Guys are out. Guys are hurt. Guys aren't playing. Other guys step up. They embrace that opportunity. So, yes, to, to, to win a very physical game down the stretch and win it with our defense is very, very, uh, you know, pleasing as a coach because in the long run, if we want to be a playoff team, these are the types of games that you have to win. You have to embrace those physical games, and you have to win with your defense, and we were able to do that tonight. Did you feel like Mason was able to frustrate DeMarcus at all down low with just his physicality? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Cuz gets frustrated a lot of things, <laughs> uh, and that, that motivates him, obviously. Um, and again, as I said earlier, I think the referees allowed both of them to play. Both of them had five fouls forever. You know, and, and obviously I, we thought there were times where Cuz should have fouled out, and they thought, I'm sure, there were times that Mason should have fouled out. But the referees allowed them both to play. And that's all you want as a coach. You want a consistent whistle. So I thought the referees did a great job with that. But, um, yeah, Mason was, again, if you do your work early, you give yourself a chance. But a week and a half ago in New Orleans, we, we let DeMarcus do whatever he wanted. We didn't embrace and meet that challenge. Tonight we did. And obviously we were able to pull out a great win. What were the big differences in having All right, Finchie. Back? I'm sorry? What were the big differences in having AD back for this game as opposed to a week ago when Anthony Davis didn't play? Yeah, I mean, geez, you know, uh, the big difference is tonight they have two all-NBA players. I mean, that is uh, really, really hard to guard. They put so much pressure on you. Um, you know, Anthony Davis is a hell of a player. DeMarcus is a hell of a player. And to, uh, you know, to, to guard those guys, obviously, it comes down to, as I mentioned many times, uh, embracing the opportunity and meeting them early and doing your work early. One guy can't guard either one of them one-on-one. They're too good. I mean, Anthony Davis and, and DeMarcus Cousins are, two, I think, the most talented front court in the NBA. And obviously, uh, you know, it, it takes not only one guy to guard them, it's a team effort. And I think we had that tonight. Thank you, guys. We're holding. So he's been great for us. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm happy to see him, uh, you know, play well. What did you think of Torrey Craig's night and to have the game he had coming up from the G League? It's been, it's been great. I mean, we were playing with him. He was in Wisconsin this morning. So for him to come back and make a game, save a stop, send it to overtime, you know, that just shows you uh, what type of player he is. And it, it was great for us. But Gary, what was the difference in defense tonight, especially in that second half? Um, you know, we were able to get stops. When we were able to get stops, we were able to get out and run. And um, 
you know, the crowd did a great job of giving us energy. And, you know, like I said, we got to defend home court like we've been doing, so that's what we wanted to do. And Will Barton, coach mentioned, he always wants the ball, especially in those overtime situations. What do you think of his performance? Like I, I said, the last guy, I mean, he's a gamer. That's what he does. So, you know, uh, nothing surprised me with him now. I mean, that's, that's what he does. So, you know, that's thrill for you. Gary, uh, Jamal just said the altitude clicked in for him about nine minute mark. Did it, man. That kicked in a few times for me that first half. It, I felt like there was a monkey on our back, but, um, you know, once we got that uh, first win, um, you know, everything was rolling for us in the second half. And is it good to have Nicola back out there? Yeah, yeah, it was good to see him back out there, play some spot minutes. So uh, looking forward to him, uh, you know, getting some more minutes and uh, getting back and getting the floor things. Thanks, Gary. It's a real moment, but. Uh, I was excited at the same time, and I was just trying to prepare myself best as I can. It was a short turnaround, so I had to prepare as fast as I can and learn as much as I can about the scout and get ready for the game. In the fourth quarter, you had that big block against Holiday. What was that challenge like just battling with him there? I mean, he's a, he's a great player. Um, I just try to use my length and my size to, to get a contested shot, and I was able to get a piece of it. So I was glad I was able to get a piece of it to, to um, go into overtime. Overall, what did you see from this team to be able to come back from 18 and get the win tonight? I mean, we showed a lot of fight. Um, that's, that's, that's what you want down the stretch, though. We got a lot of clutch guys on this team that's not afraid to make plays. Um, I feel like we got some good stops down the stretch and was able to put the ball in the basket, so come up with a win. You told me earlier how you're starting to find a chemistry with these team, getting to know these guys. Will Barton was very active with you in the huddles I saw. How was his advice and how did he help? I mean, he helped a lot, um, just telling me the little things about getting stops and, uh, and running the floor. And it, it was more than him. It was other guys giving me little tips and stuff to, to help me get through the game. And uh, I really appreciate those guys. And that, that just shows you the kind of close net group we have. <laughs> Speaking of coming up from the G League, Coach said he, you got a call when you were in Wisconsin, had to get an Uber. Kind of take me through that. Oh, yeah. Um, I, they called me like late last night and told me they was calling me up. So I had to catch an Uber from Oshkosh, Wisconsin at midnight <laughs> to um, Wisconsin and then check in the airport like 430. And I got here around seven and came straight here for shoot around. And then I got like a two hour nap and then came back. And then you found out you were getting the start. Oh, yeah. And then I found out I was starting. I was like, oh, man. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any nerves tonight? No, nah, not really. Um, I've been playing basketball for a long time. Um, I, I, you get anxious, you get excited, but not really nervous. So um, I, I, I felt like I was well prepared and I was just ready to play. What's, uh, what's Coach telling you in the huddle on that last possession of regulation when he puts you in uh, guard Drew? You know what? He really didn't tell me anything. He's like, Tori, you in. And then it's like, uh, like, Tori, you in and you got Drew. And um, when I went in the game, I, I, they inbound the ball and it was like an ISO situation. So I knew I had to make a big play for us to win the game and I was able to get a, a block shot. So. Are you going by instinct at that point? Or you, you mentioned you kind of had to scout pretty quick. Did you have any sense of what he might, might do in that situation? No, I had no idea what he was going to do. Um, my first thought was I was thinking he was going to try to uh, take me to the basket. But then he pulled up for a jumper, and I was just able to get a piece of it. So he, I, he kind of bailed me out. But either way, I think I was going to get a block because it was just too crucial, and I know we needed to stop. Are you planning on having a shoey to celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to agree to that? No. Uh, <laughs> no, I won't have any shoeys, but uh, I think me and a couple guys are going to go eat, so that will be good. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Sorry. No problem. Hey, congratulations. Second. <laughs> uh, uh, Mason stepped up, I think, you know, late. I think he, uh, he matched the aggressiveness of Boogie and uh, you know, he was making plays of him all night long, and, uh, and that was a team effort. You know, we, we, we provide help on each other, and, and uh, we closed out with defense. And, and I, like I said, no thrill uh, with a great offensive performance in the fourth. Yeah, what did you think of him there in overtime, how he just kind of took control? It was a great offensive performance in the fourth. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he normally does that. You know, he has a knack for, for getting the ball and, and making plays down the stretch. And uh, I know tonight we, we need him to do that. And, uh, you know, it wasn't just him. A lot of guys stepped up. You know, T. Craig stepped up. Uh, Joker, you know, did his role. And, and, and Gary did a lot. So uh, it was a great team effort. What did you see from Trey Lyles there in the fourth with 13 points? He did a lot. You know, he, his strokes going on right now. You know, he's shooting the ball well and playing with a lot of energy. So uh, we're going to need to continue that down the stretch to win these you know, next few games. And, uh, you know, he's, he's showing what he's got right now, and he's doing a good job of, of playing with the team. Was it good to have Nicola back up there? No, it was terrible. It sucked. <laughs> um, no, it was great. No, he, he's, uh, he's just one of those leaders, you no know, silent leaders. Um, you know, he moves the ball well, gets us into our sets, and, uh, you know, always in the right spot at the right time. And, and uh, it was good to have him you know, on the court, you know, back for the first time in a month. 
Was there any point in this game when you guys were down at 18 at one point that you felt like this one's getting away from you, or did you always know you could chip and get to it? No, I mean, we had a great start, and uh, when the altitude hit, um, you know, I don't think it just hit us, it hit them too, and it was kind of back and forth, and uh, you could tell my guys were just tired. And that was our first game back you know, in Denver, and uh, you know, like I said, you know, the air was dry, uh, and uh, you could just tell guys were tired, and it was an up and down game, and who, you know, whoever took advantage of the most, and you know, they were in control for most of the game, but uh, when we came through, it was down the stretch and with our defense. Yeah, Coach mentioned that altitude. When for you did that kind of click in? <laughs> For nine minutes, Mark. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it was. It's one of those things where it just hits you. You know, you don't get your second win for a while, and uh, you no, know, obviously, you know, you, you play through it and all that. But you no, know, it, it it hit hard when they started making the run, and, and uh, we started getting deflated after that. And final one for me, but Tory Craig coming up from the G League, having the game he had. No, he was he was great. You no, know, he was playing his game. You no, know, he, he played a great one-on-one uh, -on -one defense on Drew Holiday at the end. And um, you know, like I said, you know, he he goes up with a certain energy and and uh, and that to to get stops and steals. And uh, you know, I'd say he was the star of the game. Thanks for the time. Right, well.